Okay, so I'm repairing this 17 PW16 dash 2 power supply here. It's a Vestel supply. It's an older one. And to be honest, it's not that bad, you know. Um, these are, these supplies aren't nearly as bad as the newer ones, even though the schematic of them is a total joke, but anyway, I got this one here and the fault with it is it keeps blowing the mains AC fuse here. Uh, that fuse there, and that's the only fuse on this board, and it keeps blowing it up very violently. Uh, this originally had a glass type of fuse in it, um, and I originally installed glass type, and it blew it up very bad. In fact, I actually did a video of this supply blowing up the fuse, and I might put that in before this uh, clip here. But uh, it kept blowing up the fuse. And normally when you get a power supply blowing up the mains fuse in such a manner that normally means that one of the power devices like the PFC uh, devices here or the switching transistors or the AC input side so the rectifier or one of the filtering components that normally means one of those is shorted out and uh, if they do the fuse will explode like it was in this. <coughs> So I went around testing them as soon as I got this. I mean, I've had these supplies where the PFC devices here blow up, um, which blows the fuse like that, and I've seen on bad caps the rectifier shorted out and blew the fuse. But I was testing them, and you know nothing was showing up as bad on my meter. So I was going all over the place. I was testing the secondary side components just to be sure. I tested the five volt standby IC and you know other parts that are prone to failure on these boards. And I couldn't find anything that was obviously bad. And as I said, normally when the fuse blows up like that, that means something is definitely short circuit, um, or in a resistor's case, open circuit. But even if a resistor did fail, I doubt it would cause the fuse to blow like that. So something <coughs> on the primary side of the power supply, which the primary side is. The primary and secondary are divided, is divided by these opto ICs in this line here. So anything above this line is the pro, uh, primary side. Uh, anyway, so I was checking around and uh, I started a thread on bag caps. Uh, and uh, Budham suggested that I disconnect the DC side uh, pins of the rectifier. So that would help me rule out any of the AC input filter here, which is. Uh, this, uh, I think that's an MOV there. Uh, the filter chokes, the uh, X cap, and the rectifier itself. So, what I did was I desoldered the DC side uh, pins and I just bent them out like that so I could get the AC side pins of the rectifier back in to test it. And uh, lo and behold, the fuse didn't blow, so that meant that the AC input filter was all good and that something else on the switching mode section of this power supply was uh, failed. And uh, so, you're probably wondering, where the heck's the filter cap gone? Well, I'll get onto that. Now, STJ uh, suggested that I checked the filter cap. Now, I checked the filter cap originally, and it had about 0.89 ohms across it, or ESR, sorry, and 200 uh, microfarads capacitance which is pretty good for a primary cap. Uh, so I didn't suspect anything, but you know he suggested that I, it could be breaking down as soon as it gets hit with the, uh, the DC, the high voltage DC coming off the PFC section here, and that I should check it out of circuit. Well, here's the cap here. It's one of these crap ass TL brand ones. Uh, 450 volt, 220 microfarad. And well, believe it or not, this cap has failed intermittently. <laughs> this thing is going crazy on my ESR meter. One second it's failing open circuit, the next it has 0 0.22 ohms across it, and the next second it has uh, 40 ohms across it, or 4 ohms across it, whatever. But this cap, I think, is the fault here. And I'm going to show you that this cap is actually failing intermittently with my ESR meter. And I think that that's the problem. And it's breaking down when it gets hit with a higher voltage. 
um, which is causing this power supply to explode. <laughs> I'm just going to come this up here. It's quite late, as you can probably tell. And my voice is all croaking. So I'm going to do this. Get the ESR meter in sight. And the cap as well, so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to short both the leads together. The leads shorted, you get zero ohms. Right, so. We test the cap. 0 0.16 ohms. That's that's a good reading. You know, that's acceptable. We test it again. 0 0.30 ohms. So it's jumped from 0 0.16 ohms to 0 0.30 ohms. It's a little odd. And then it's just jumped from 0 0.30 ohms to 0 0.95 ohms. Yeah, that's uh, not good. Back to 0 0.38 ohms, and these meter probes, I'm not, you know, not pushing these on hard enough. Back to 0 0.30. It's jumped to 1.5 ohms. That's not good at all. Capacitance is remaining, you know, pretty much the same. Hmm. Back to 0 0.17 ohms. That's a bit odd. 0 0.23 0 0.27 an open circuit and then 1.7 ohms 2.5 it's getting charged up by my meter here. So as you can see this cap is a bit jumpy. So what I'm going to do is take my multimeter and I'm going to charge this cap up. I'm going to set this to diode mode, which applies enough voltage just to charge this up a little. And when I do charge this up, it fails completely open circuit from what I've found so I'm just going to hold these on here for a second it's a pretty good little you know, testing area for a cap like the handle of my toolbox seems to hold it <laughs> so I'll just hold these probes on here for a second should give it a little bit of juice but uh, the Peak Atlas ESR meter does actually uh, discharge the cap but Hopefully, uh, after I di it discharges it, it still goes completely open. That should be enough. Discharging. Oh, didn't do it that time. As you see, the ESR is pretty all over the place with this. And it often jumps from a low ohms to a high ohms uh, to open circuit. And it completely open circuit now. <laughs> this cap is mental. It's literally failing intermittently. And I'd say that when this thing gets hit with a high voltage, it completely melts down and is what's causing the fuse to blow. Primary caps like this should not be jumping around with the ESR like that. So what I'm going to do is get another primary cap that I know is good, or I think is good, Sam's on, and just prove that primary caps should not be behaving like that. Um, just going to use these test probes here. Oh jeez, I messed that up. So it should have about 0. Point. No, that's a little high there. 
but you should see that it doesn't jump around should variate a little but not in the way that that one is it might go a little lower as it does get charged hang on a minute let's swap let's do something else okay okay so this one actually appears to be better than the one that I just tested so this is a Samoir here, 150, 450 volt. Zero point three or zero point thirty ohms, and it should stay about there. And it sh it might variate from zero point two eight to zero point thirty. But as you see, it's staying rock solid on. that amount of ohms and that it says open circuit because I just took my probes off and get another one here Oops. Sam Young Sam crap like all these but they're not that bad Zero point two five zero point two four You see it's staying the same, roughly. Let's get another just to prove it even more. I don't know what was going on with that other Samsung cap that I had. It might have actually been failed, but I'll have to check that one out after. This is a different one than the other one that I just had a minute ago. 0.32. Zero point three three. See, it does variate a little, but that's only very minor variations. You see. So that's what these other good primary caps should be testing like. I don't know what happened with that other one that I tested, but that's probably bad as well. But this one is totally messed up. One second it has low ohms. See, 1.9 and then next time I test this 0 0.5 2.8 and that you you should have below 0 0.5 ohms on any primary cap. See if it was measure, yeah. If it was measuring 0 0.5 ohms, you know, I probably wouldn't have suspected it. And it did measure pretty low. It measured 0 0.87 in circuit, and I thought it was okay. But uh, obviously, something is not happy inside this cap. See, 2.4 ohms, 8.4 ohms, and the meter's just. You hear the change in the beep. And that means the meter's gone. You know, that cap is not good and open circuit failure. So it's failing from a low ohms to open circuit, which is not good. 26.2 ohms. And you can definitely tell it's measuring the cap because it has the capacitance at the top. The capacitance doesn't really vary and it's a little low. But this cap is out of its head. <laughs> it's completely off its nut. 27 ohms. 7.6. Open circuit. Um... <laughs> I'm just going to keep testing this, just so you can see how unstable this thing is. Probably got the point by now, but I'm just proving. See, it's going from like really low uh, to, you know, which I consider as normal ohms for a primary cap of this value. 40 ohms. 
totally open circuit. 27. 1. 0 0.4. So yeah, <coughs> um, this is the first case I've ever had, an intermittent primary cap. A um, bit of an odd one. It's a TL tough look, I call them. Junkie cap. They make the JH caps as well. Absolute crap. It's not physically bulged, but... Oh, that's my TV going off. But it's failed in some sort of way inside the cap. And I don't know how... I don't know what's gone on inside there, but... Something is definitely you know, blew up or something. Bit of an odd one really, but um, I hope I still have the footage of this power supply actually blowing up because that will just add to my evidence of this cap being bad and intermittent, but as you saw my ESR meter did not like this cap whatsoever. So uh, hopefully I can fix this Frankenstein power supply. I call them that because they're just a total mess. It's all over the place. And I'm just going to steal a cap off another board um, of the same value. And I'll test that before I actually install this and just show show you te me testing it. And uh, then I'll replace that one at the top was actually, that was actually physically bulged and that's actually totally open circuit. And if the power supply works and doesn't blow up again, I will recap it properly and uh, put it in the TV and fix the TV, hopefully. Yeah, but a bit of an odd failure. <laughs> Keep you updated.